Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I go over the building of the uh, Quick Oats kit, a wonderful sport flying kit from Stevens Aero that I think you'll like a lot. Let's get to it. The Quick Oats is a very easy to build kit by Stevens Arrow. The website is in the description. It's an outfit out in Colorado. The designs and laser cuts, very high quality RC model airplane kits. The Quick Oats is a play off of the um, Quaker Flyer, which is a very famous free flight fl flyer from the 1930s. Uh, it echoes the large wing and just the distinctive shape of that airplane. And as you'll see in this video, the um, kit is an exceptionally well-designed kit, all laser-cut balsa, high-quality balsa, an extremely comprehensive builder's guide to build the airplane. It's just a lot of fun to build. It looks nice, and I can tell you that it flies absolutely great. So let's get into the building of this um, neat little airplane. So now let's take a look at the contents of the uh, Quick Oats kit. Uh, first, we'll look at the little flyer that comes here. This is what we'll be building. Uh, they call it a charming RC park, park flyer. It's based on the 1939 Quaker Flash, which was a much larger, very popular free flight model from uh, 1939. It's online. I showed you uh, uh, previously where this was um, on the website, but this is one of the beauties of the Stevens Aero model kits. They have a complete um, instruction guide. They have the project checklist for the kit contents, special electronics, required building items, and so forth. But the real benefit, and this comes with the kit, is they have each step, step by step, a little checkbox, and corresponding to each number, step one, step two, step three, they have a picture of how it all goes together. And the markings of the formers in this case, F1 and F2, they are matched onto the balsa. It just, it just couldn't be any easier for assembling the kit. Just everything is there step by step. There are no full-size plans for the uh, Quick Oats because the kit is so precisely designed with its laser design and um, laser cutting of the balls that goes together like a jigsaw puzzle. They do include, in this case, a little addendum. Uh, this is the landing gear detail, the vertical tail surfaces, the horizontal tail surfaces, just to help you out. And also, uh, to show you the, your attention to detail, these are actually the paper patterns that you can put for the monocoat to get the distinctive side um, covering of the model. I think we'll go ahead and do that just to, to match up with that. So these is what comes in the bag with the kit. They have the windshield uh, located here. These are the plywood parts. Very good balsa uh, laser cutting. F12. All the names of it are very uh, clearly um, posted on there. Some spare parts with uh, tail joiners, rubber bands, screws. And this is the balsa wood. Very high quality balsa wood. Again, all clearly marked. And to show you their attention to detail on the bottom, this is a music wire and the uh, music wire covering that is all just taped there for your access for the kit. So again, very complete to kit. What I'd like to do now is just uh, go through the extra stuff that you need to build this model. And this is all listed here. We'll just go through everything. We did a transmitter with at least three channels. We'll use my DX6 transmitter for that. We need a micro receiver. Um, with at least uh, three channels. This is the four channel Spectrum AR610, just a standard little receiver there. We need two um, HS35 or 55 servos. These are two uh, high-tech HS55 servos. And again, I got the servos, many of these parts, off the Stevens Aero website. I got this from Stevens, the Sport 250 motor. Um, this came off the website. You'll find availability is hit or miss these days with the supply chains from China. This is being filmed in October 2021. What you need is just an electric motor that will fly a 5 to 6 ounce model. Any electric motor will do. Um, we need an electronic speed control. They have a 10 amp. I have a Castle Talon 15 amp. This is what I'll use for the electronic speed control. 
Um, we need a propeller, 6x3. Again, I bought this off the Stevens Aero website. That'll be fine. Prop adapter, um, I bought off the website here. And we need uh, one and one half inch wheels, which are located right here. Now, the one thing to keep in mind for any electronic speed control and motor, you have to connect the two. Recall with the electronic speed control at standard, you have a connection to the receiver. This goes into port number one, black, the dark uh, wire towards the bottom of the receiver. So the very complete kit, that's the unboxing. And now we can go ahead with step one, building the fuselage. So here is the very high quality laser cut balsa sheet parts. The balsa was really good. There's the identification that's etched on the laser on each part. Uh, very easy to keep track of the various parts as you build the model. As I mentioned before, the Photo Illustrated manual is extremely helpful. You can see it online, it comes with a kit, and there's a photo literally for each step, and you just put it together, sort of like a, a jigsaw puzzle. And when they tell you to glue things in place, it really couldn't be much easier. Here's the side of the fuselage with the uh, platform for the hardware and the uh, formers. It all glues together, makes for a pretty strong structure, yet lightweight. Just a very thought out design for the entire airplane. There are the needed plywood parts. Again, laser cut. This is the uh, firewall with little cooling uh, um, openings built in, wires for the motor. Again, just a very thought out design, goes together well. Here's a fuselage getting ready for the second half. You can see on the building table, the slots and the tabs fit together. It just goes together well. When you're satisfied with the fit, you put in the uh, CA glue and it just, it goes together very quickly. Here's a completed, fu completed fuselage. You can see the top mount for the wing, the fuselage sides, the uh, bottom will help keep everything aligned. Again, just everything going together well. A view of the uh, tail surfaces and the hatch. Again, nothing special with the tail surfaces, just the laser cut parts. We, there is a plan that you can put them on the outline there. And once everything's glued into place, it looks just like any other model that you built. Very nice. Hey, good progress on the quickos today. I'd like to get you up to speed where we are. This is about a little over half day's worth of work. So here's a fuselage, it just follows the plan, goes together very well, all the parts fit, uh, no problem. I did make one slight change from the uh, directions that I'll share with you. And what happens is there's always a little bit of a challenge fitting in the servos. So I had to cut out the square just a little bit to a pre-marked position for my HS55 servos. And I screwed one in place. I'll do the other one tomorrow. The reason I did this now is the directions have you put on the top and the entire bottom. I just have a hard time reaching the control horn uh, tubing with the, when the bottom is covered. I learned that from my Guilo's conversions. You've got to put on the top to bring the tail together to close it towards the end. This is the top of the stabilizer, no problem there. The top for the wing is fine, but I left this whole bottom section open. Uh, these parts will go here. There's another one that will go up here, and then there will be a removable hatch here for the battery that I'll, I'll work on that tomorrow. So the servos went in fine. I put in these rods while this is open, so that went fine. The other thing I did for the servos to connect the control wires, uh, this is the wire. This is a little um, Dubro Mini Easy Connector. It's very easy to use. You just have this little set screw up here, and then you can adjust the wire back and forth for the control surface. So I find those, those pretty handy for a model like this. Also, the directions are pretty good about cutting off the servo arm so they don't hit each other because the servos are going to be right next to each other in the fuselage. So that's kind of the thing that's a little bit tricky putting in. The receiver, electronic speed control, no problem. As I showed you with the motor, it will fit on just fine here with the screw holes. The wires will go through there for the uh, motor to the electronic speed control. So all that's in pretty good shape. This is the slot for the landing gear. There should be no problems with that. The tail surfaces just couldn't be much easier. You build them directly over this uh, detail of the plan. They actually do give you a plan for the uh, tail surfaces. Just the numbered parts just go right in place. and. Um, We'll sand these up tomorrow, bevel the engines, uh, the edges of the um, elevator and rudder so they can go down. Finish up the fuselage, do the hatch, 
do the wing, and then we can move on from there. Uh, just one other thing to keep in mind, there are a couple of plywood parts, 160th inch plywood, so it's a mixture of the balsa and ply. Sometimes the directions don't mention ply. If you have a problem finding F1 or whatever part you're looking for, it could be on the ply sheet. So I think this is where we are right now. It's a cute little model going together just fine, and we will continue with the wing in the bottom of the fuselage tomorrow. Making good progress on the quick oats. Uh, the fuselage is complete. You can see that I put in the second set of servos. The top is in place for the fuselage, as well as the indications for the bottom. Uh, the bottom is important because that brings the taper back to the fuselage, keeps everything in line. As I mentioned, this was open to put in the uh, push rods. I think it's easier to do that way. Little plywood holder and the um, rear earth magnet for the latch. This is the latch right here with the lip and the other magnet, the two magnets come with the kit. Remember these magnets have to be um, aligned for the attraction. If they're the opposite way, they repel each other. So you just have to check that before you put it in. It takes a little bit of fitting to get it in, but this is the hatch. The latch goes in here and listen. So that's a good fit right there for the hatch. This is pretty common with the Steven Zeros kit. So fuselage is in good shape. Um, the motor will be put in here later and so forth. We have started with the wing. Just wanted to show you this is how it goes together. There are no plans for the wing. It just builds like a little puzzle. With the step-by-step -step instructions, it's absolutely crucial if you build the wing. The wing has to be flat. There can be no warps in the wing whatsoever. So what I do is I take this flat um, building board and as I put together the pieces and I tack glue them, I just make sure everything is absolutely flat on the building board. It's flat on each half because of the uh, dihedral that is built into the forward and aft spars. So we'll take a break for now, uh, continue up the wing, and this is where we are so far. A nice, nice big wing for this airplane. I think it'll fly, fly well. I've completed building the uh, framework for the quick oats. The wing is complete and it went together like the other portions of the model. Everything fit in well, glued together. The directions are very comprehensive. I've sanded it so we have a leading edge shape. The dihedral is built into the wing spar so that happens automatically. And so now this is all set for covering. So the next step on the model will be to cover the model. To cover this model, we're gonna use a iron-on covering. Uh, so what I'm using here is Microlite. I picked two colors, the yellow and the red. Uh, this happens to be a transparent color, which is fine for these models. You can cover. Here is a model with the iron-on covering. Again, very important, use the light covering to keep the weight light. Total weight for this model came out about 6.5 ounces. Right, these are the troll surfaces. Note also the laser cut plywood control horns that fit in very well with the kit. Note also the control rod setup. The rods extend a little bit. You'll put another uh, bit of music wire on the horn to the elevators and rudders. They overlap. You put heat shrink tubing on the overlap shown here. Shrink the heat shrink tubing, add a little dab of epoxy. It's a very effective way to have a good adjustment. I've completed the quick oats. Uh, here it is. The weight came out at six and a half ounces, so that's uh, within the range. I think it came out pretty good. Um, everything went well according to the plans. See the landing gear is glued in. These are the wheels that I bought. We'll take off the hatch. The battery is located right here. The receiver, electronic speed control, and then the two servos you can kind of sort of see through the top of the wing. Very important, of course, to make sure that the model balances correctly. Per the directions, it balances right behind or right at the, uh, slightly behind the wing spar. So we'll hold it here at the wing spar, and that's a good balance there. So we're all set to go. The battery I use is a two cell LiPo. Um, it's a Thunder Power uh, 325, uh, and that, that fits in well into the fuselage and, and balances it out. So let's turn on the transmitter, make sure the throttle's low. As 
up elevator, down, left, right. And the little motor gives plenty of thrust. All the details are in the description. So I think that'll work out well for the flight. Uh, the weather looks pretty good at the field tomorrow. So we'll give it out for a test flight. The one thing that caught me a little bit by surprise, you can see the amount of down thrust of the motor. Uh, that is built into the model. You can see the slots in the fuselage where the firewall went in. That's, that's a lot of down thrust. Um, Steven Zero designs this well. I think with a larger wing, it kind of produces a lot of lift, so we need some down thrust. As I said with Steven Zero, there's no plans for these kits, so I can't look at a plan to show you where the firewall should be. We'll just have to assume that everything works out okay with that. So, everything is in good shape. Uh, the model balances out. There's no warps in the wing, plenty of power. We'll just hope for calm winds for our test flight tomorrow. Okay, we're out here at the field for the first flight, main flight of the Quick Oats. Looks like a perfect day with the wind. Sun's a little low in the sky. It's uh, coming up in November, but that's okay. So everything's in order. Uh, here's the airplane. We're on the rubber bands. Battery's in place. We'll take a look at the controls. Elevator, rudder, and the throttle. So what I think I'll do for this takeoff is I've decided to take off on the ground. Um, that can go a couple of different ways, depending how straight the landing gear is. But I think I'll try it. Remember, there's no serial tail wheel. So what my plan is to apply pretty much full throttle to get flying. So we don't worry about S turns on takeoff. If that doesn't work, we'll do a hand launch. So wish me luck. This is the no kidding test uh, baited flight of the uh, quick codes. It just came off quickly from the ground. I could tell right away from when the takeoff was just a good handling model. No trim required, could slow it down and just put it around low altitude in front of me. A very comfortable airplane to fly, looks nice. And I think you'll enjoy your kit of the Quick Oats should you decide to make it. And if you do, best of luck. So we just finished the uh, maiden flight and the second one with the quick oats. Uh, you can see the video. I, I couldn't be any happier with this airplane. It flew perfectly. It, it took off, and the moment it took off, you could just tell with certain aircraft it's going to handle well. It was, um, it, as the old expression goes, it's an honest airplane. There was no trim required. Um, it turned well. There was plenty of rudder throw. The elevator was fine. Tons of throttle. I was flying in probably about half throttle most of the flight. Even the landing worked out well. So incredibly pleased with the handling and flight performance of this little model the quick oats um there's there's nothing i can say against it so if you decide to build one good luck i think you'll be pleased i, I will look forward to flying this many more times